Well, maybe there isn't a bell. I thought there was going to be a bell. I was waiting for that to happen, so. There's the bell. Welcome to worship on this fourth weekend in Epiphany, after Epiphany, I should say. Last night was the last night of our three baptisms in a row. Will Neil Freeman was baptized last night, and another just gorgeous child. He did so well. So keep that family in your prayers. Keep that little one in your prayers. And give God thanks for all that he has given to us, these little children. In-person Sunday school begins next week for grades 2 through 6. Grades 2 through 6, and they will meet at 9 o'clock, and so will we. So remember that next week. You'll be ushered out after worship today, but remember those of you who are on committees or executive board or whatever, you know who you are. Please come back after you're ushered out or just stay in here. Either one, I don't care. Either works. So, then on February, t February 21st, next month is the worst month in my career. I don't like to say that word, February. That's hard. Um, somebody wrote down that they are honoring their mom or something on that day. It's the radio uh, broadcast sheet. We don't know who mom is or who wrote it down. And so if you happen to know who that is, if, or if you can have somebody call the office so that we can get the right people in there, that would be so helpful. Otherwise, we'll do with it as we can. In Deuteronomy, God promises to raise up a prophet like Moses, who will speak for God. In Psalm 111, God shows the people the power of God's works. So for the church, these are ways of pointing to the unique authority people sensed in Jesus' actions and his words. We encounter that authority in God's word around which we gather, the word that prevails over any lesser spirit that would claim power over us, freeing us to follow Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of his Holy Spirit, Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and then grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare unto you all, 
the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of his Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you gather the whole universe into your radiant presence and continually reveal your Son as our Savior. Bring wholeness to all that is broken and speak truth to us in our confusion that all creation will see and know your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
A first reading for today comes from Deuteronomy, the 18th chapter. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of my Lord my God any more or ever again see this great fire, I will die. And then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who shall speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. The second lesson comes from 1 Corinthians, the 8th chapter. Now concerning food, sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up. But love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge. But anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God, but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom all exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge. Since some have become so accustomed to idols until now, they still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol. And their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block for the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, might not they, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to, point to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause of their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Let us stand for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia! The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light for those who sat in the shadow of death, light has dawned. Alleluia. A gospel for today comes from Mark, the first chapter.
Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. And when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. And just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. And they were amazed. And they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority? He commands even the unclean spirits. And they obey him. And at once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Lord. And you may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I preached a sermon last night. It was okay. Didn't go where I wanted it to go. I didn't feel real good about it. And so today, I'm preaching a little bit different sermon. But last night, let me tell you what I did preach about. I preached about enc encouragement, encouraging people on. I preached about how it was that when I was a, a young parent, I'd go to my kids' children's, my kids' children's, they have children now, but not back then. I went to my kids' soccer games, and we would cheer them on, and we would cheer them on, and we, the families were just excited, and so everybody was just having a ball. And those people out there in that field, they're lost. I forget which goal is mine. Oh, this is such a nice girl. I'll give her the ball, even though she's on the other team. You know, it's just sweet little things like that. It was fun. Sometimes there was a point made in the game. Most of the time, there wasn't. But we encouraged, they played. Two separate entities doing two separate things. I talked about a swimmer who came from a poor country. He was taken to the Olympics. He just learned how to swim a couple months before he even went to the Olympics. And so when he gets there, two of his competitors have false starts. Truly they do. He runs the race himself. Can't make it to the finish line even. He's just out of breath. He can't go anymore. And he hasn't even made it to the finish line. And people applaud, cheer him on, encourage him on. And they do, and he makes it to the finish line, and yay him. And you know, I thought about this, and it's like, yeah, this is all good. This is what we need to do. But there's something missing. They finish the line. They finish the race. not the rest. That's not what I want to get across. And then it came to me. Okichiapi. Okichiapi. It's a Lakota word. And it means help each other. And you know, when we encourage each other like this, we're helping each other. Okichiapi. 
But that's not what that word means. When I hear that word, I see something. When I hear okichiapi, it means the three-legged race. Let's go there. The three-legged race. How are you going to do this? Well, you're going to tie your leg together with your partner, and you're going to race down some kind of a field to the finish line. You now have a choice, help or not. You don't help, neither cross the line. You do help, and you both cross the line. And that's what I was missing. I believe today when we bring new people in, bring old people back in, and I don't mean old age-wise, although I'm thinking many of us are maybe feeling like we're getting old, but what we need, I had told the people out in the congregation to encourage our leaders on. And I believe we need to do that. But I also believe we need to work together. We all have the same finish line to make. Have you realized how many silos we build in the church? How many little cages we build? The leaders are over here and the rest of you guys are over here. Every once in a while we'll hear this leader that says, oh, let's do it this way and we're going to do it that way and blah, 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 blah and that's what we're going to do. Has never talked to a single person out of the group, has never done anything, has this amazing empathy. Or em no, that's not the right word. Can understand other people without ever talking to them. We don't need that. We need people. Okichiapi. We need people helping people. The leaders need our help. We need the leaders' help. And we are going to be tied together. And we're going to make it to that finish line together. It is not a select few getting to a finish line. It's Okichiapi. Wrong accent. Okichiapi. It's helping each other. We can't make assumptions. I have learned through this COVID time, there are a ton of reactions. Some people are just lost, feeling more lost than ever. People have never listened to me before, and they don't even talk to me now. Oh, I, I just about cry when I hear that. How does that person How does that person get across the finish line? I don't care what that leader does in the church unless somebody ties themselves to that person. That person isn't going to make it. And that's sad. There is no okichiapi there. None. There was no help. There wasn't even a listening ear. So I, you don't have to know this word, okichiapi. But you do need to hear help each 
other, as if you are tied to that person, as if you know exactly what is on their mind. And we need to hear each other, not to the point of, oh, you want to come back together to church. No, big deal. Why? And you need to ask that question five times. Why? You need to get deep. I want to be here at church. Why? So I can be with my people that I like. Why? Because they do things that matter to me. But why do you, why do, you do those things? Because it reminds me of who I am. You've lost identity. This has nothing to do with being together. You've lost your identity. Now we know the issue. If we don't ask, if we don't talk to each other, we assume we know, and we know nothing until we get to Okichiapi. Helping each other, listening closely to each other, digging deeply with each other, never assuming we know better. Because it is that lost soul that Jesus comes to find. It is that lost soul that we tie ourselves to and we win that race. That's why God came to us. Okichiapi to help us, to bind himself with us, to be in, with, and under. Those beautiful Lutheran words, not to hear, oh, so you need your sins forgiven, okay. No, he learned why we need our sins forgiven. He asked the question and he listened. Okichiyabi. Aho. Help each other. Amen.
Let us stand. We'll say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Those who are not on committees or the executive board or whatever, you may be sitting down, but the rest of you stand up, please. Or continue standing is what I'm trying to say. All members of the congregation, stay standing until this is all done, and I will let you know when you can uh, be seated then. These people who are left standing have been chosen for positions of leadership. And I want to add servanthood at Christ Lutheran Church. We give, the, we give thanks for their willingness to serve. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share into the mission of God. We rejoice now that these sisters and brothers will lead and serve our common life as mutual ministers in this, in this congregation. A reading from 1 Corinthians 12. There are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To teach is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. You have been chosen for positions of leadership, servanthood, and trust in this congregation. You are to see that the words and deeds of this household of faith bear witness to God, who gathers us into one, together with the whole church on earth. You are to seek to involve all members of this congregation in worship, learning, witness, service, and support so that the mission of Christ is carried out in this congregation in the wider church. In Slayton, Minnesota. In the whole wide world. You are to be faithful in your specific area of serving that the Spirit who empowers you may be glorified. You are to live out your baptismal promises, to faithfully hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people, following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. You are to be examples of faith, active in love, fostering peace, harmony, and mutual understanding in this congregation. So to you, all who are being installed today, on behalf of your sisters and brothers in Christ, I ask you, will you accept and faithfully carry out the duties of the offices to which you have been chosen? And if so, please answer, I will, and I ask God to help me. Congregation, will you please rise now? People of God, 
I ask you, will you support these, your chosen leaders? And will you share in the mutual ministry that Christ has given to all who are baptized? And if so, please answer, we will. And we ask God to help us. I now declare to you, you are installed as leaders of this congregation, Christ Lutheran Church. Almighty God, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace that you may be faithful servants of Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Let us acknowledge these people, congregation. These are your leaders. The peace of the Lord be with you all. You may share that peace however you feel comfortable sharing that peace. Feel free to sit when you're done. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we pray for all who share the gospel and proclaim the freedom that we have in Christ throughout the world. We pray for the prophets, the teachers, bishops, pastors, deacons, and leaders, lay leaders, our Sunday school teachers, students, and all who will resume these wonderful classes next week. We pray for this church as they tie themselves together to cross a finish line that you have set for us. The finish line of being together with you. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all God's works in creation, we give you thanks, God. We give you thanks for all of the wonderful, diverse plants and animals, the water and the soil, the forests, the farms, and those who are tasked with protecting our natural, natural resources and all that exists. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. God, we give you thanks for our government, our leaders, those over cities and nations. We pray for those who are rescue professionals and legal aid attorneys. We pray for the elected officials and grassroots organizers and all responsible for the well-being of civil society, including men and women of our armed forces. Dear Lord, help them tie each other, help, help them tie themselves to each other, and to be servants who can carry each other through two finish lines. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Dear Lord, we pray for those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. We pray for those who are sick and hospitalized, those who are living with COVID, those struggling with mental illnesses, those who are hungry or homeless, and all who are in any need. Today we especially pray for Helen, Larry, Kristen, Joyce, LaVon, Allison, Twyla, Patty, Les, Craig, Lila, Linda, Chris, Gary, David, Clarine, Phyllis, Judy, Elaine, John, Carl, John, Roger, and Bernice. We pray for caregivers, hospice workers, home health aides. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Dear Lord, we pray for the concerns of this congregation. Christ Lutheran Church, Slayton, Minnesota. We pray for those who travel, those who are absent from worship, those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, 
We pray for the people of God in this place and for the other needs of people in this community. Help us to tie ourselves to this community, to each other. Let us pray. Have mercy, O oh God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. At this time, we usually receive the offering, and as usual, since COVID has started, we will take the offering at the back of the church. So when you leave today, there you go. But we'll say the offering prayer now. So let us pray. O oh God, receive our gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms wide open. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with the same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance, his favor upon you and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of his Holy Spirit, amen. peace, Okichiapi, be the light of Christ. <laughs>